Hi everybody, I'm Carolyn Locoville and this is Carolyn's Caregiving Connection. It's a program of the Lantern of Chagrin Valley Assisted Living Community just outside Cleveland, Ohio. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing for the Lantern of Chagrin Valley and I'm joined with two sister communities, Lantern of Madison and Lantern of Saybrook. You can learn more about all of our communities at www.lanternlifestyle.com. Each of our communities does host a weekly program of their own, and you can catch us live as you're doing tonight, or you can find us on YouTube. That's the newest thing we're offering right now. All of our episodes are recorded on YouTube. You can find them under Lantern Lifestyle or under the name of the program. And again, this one is Carolyn's Caregiving Connection. We also record the programs and post them both on our Facebook pages as well as LinkedIn. So you can find us a lot of places on demand and we hope that uh, if you haven't had the opportunity yet, you'll go back and visit some of the past topics that we've had in the last three to four months. We do uh, so appreciate those of you who have been listening in your comments to us and your suggestions. And because of your suggestions, we've been able to invite different speakers to come on and be guests on our program. So thank you for that. And we hope you'll keep doing that. That helps us have a better program for you. Now, in past programs, we have talked about a topic, decluttering uh, and cluttering. You know, that's uh, something that we've all kind of uh, seen a lot of attention on. Uh, of course, there are the TV shows, hoarding and what have you, but we're not really talking about that level. Uh, we're talking about the fact that so many of us right now can even feel stressed from just having too many things, too much stuff. So in one of our past programs, we dealt with that and how all of us at any age can really take a look at getting a little bit more organized and dealing with that stuff that we have and uh, doing away with it. But tonight's program is on a different level. Its uh, topic tonight is declutter to downsize, helping a um, senior home environment helping to downsize and declutter a senior home or household. And we bring up that topic because number one, we're coming to the end of the year. So we're nesting a little bit more, being inside, especially during our current COVID situation. A lot of people are looking at um, how to tidy up their home and get things in a different shape. But for seniors, we have some specialty considerations that are really coming um, more into play, if you will, during the winter months. So tonight we're going to talk about downsizing and decluttering, helping get that senior household in order, but with three different scenarios. So the first scenario will be helping a senior who is living independently in their own home. The second one was helping a senior who needs to move to a senior living environment. They're going to be leaving their home and going to a senior apartment, perhaps an assisted living community, a continuing care community, going to live with another relative, or perhaps a skilled nursing facility. And then the last scenario will be for uh, how we can assist that senior who is moving out of the home into another location, but the house is going to be sold. So the house needs to be completely either staged and ready for a sale or empty. And those are three different scenarios that we sometimes face as caregivers. So for the first one, the senior who's living independently at home, the most primary concern we have is safety. We know that the number one risk to seniors living in their own home is the risk of falls. When people fall, they're very likely to break a bone. And when individuals fall and break their hip or break their hip and fall, there's sometimes controversy on which came first there. Uh, what can happen is, of course, they may have surgery, they may have rehab, but about a third or more will never really walk well again. So we certainly don't want that for anyone we care for. So what are we going to think about when we think about the person who is living alone in their home and how we can address safety in the context of decluttering and uh, downsizing, if you will? Well, the first thing is floor space. If we know that the number one risk is falls, then we need a floor space that is open clear and not putting them at risk. So one of the first things we want to do, remove all throw rugs. And older people love throw rugs and I'm one of them. So we have to remove all those throw rugs. They're easy to, uh, to cause a trip and fall, our shoes catch on them, anything. So let's remove all throw rugs. That's important. The next thing is that if you do have rugs, area rugs that are carpets that are, you know, on the uh, space, but they're not wall to wall, Find a way to either tack down the corners 
or to uh, have that under padding that you can buy. All the major uh, stores like Target and K um, I almost said Kmart, uh, Target, Kohl's, any any uh, store like that, JCPenney, they all have a, an item that is um, basically on a roll and you put it under a larger piece of carpeting and it keeps it a little bit flatter. So helping to clear the floor space is an important thing. Take a look at the areas where somebody may be sitting. So if they use recliners, if they sit in a, cl a club chair, if they sit on a sofa around where they're sitting and where their feet would go, are those areas where they're just stacking items. A lot of us, we drop our glasses there. Okay, that's not that big of a hazard. But if that's where you're storing books, where your magazines go, your newspapers, if that's where you kind of drop the mail every day or your loved one does that, those become not only safety hazards, but they're items typically that we really don't need. So those are some of the first things we should think about when we're starting to declutter. Are there piles of magazines, piles of newspapers, old junk mail, things like that that could either be on the floor or on top of a table, the dining room table. Uh, here's one of the things that I'm guilty of doing and that's I put a lot of things on stairs. I'm meaning that I'm going to take these items upstairs at the end of the evening or I wanna remember where I put those two books or those letters that I need to mail and I will put things on my stairs. Again, big safety hazard, but also just a clutter hazard. So those are things we can easily do away with. We also wanna think about when it comes to um, wherever this person may be living, we wanna be careful of um, anything that is going to be unnecessary furniture. Do we have lots of furniture in the room? And perhaps this is someone who lives by themselves, as we said, or maybe only has a spouse. Do they need those large sofas? Do they need two sofas? Do they need all these extra chairs? If so, great. But if not, is this a time for us to take a look at moving some chairs uh, either to other rooms, beginning to think, is this a sale item we can have? Is it something we could donate to another? Do we have a college youngster getting ready for first apartments? You know, is there another purpose that that furniture could serve without being um, a potential safety hazard, if you will? Some of the other things we want to think about is, you know, again, um, are there extra large pieces of furniture? You know, some of us have lived in our homes a long time, so we may have the large dining room set. We may have the curio. We may have the buffet. We may have the china cabinet. Again, are those items all in use or do they become dust magnets, trip hazards, and are they just places for clutter? So if they're needed, they're needed. But if they're not, is this a time to think, do I have some great pieces that I could sell? Are there people in the family that might love them and this is my time to give them to them while they can appreciate what I'm doing and I can tell the stories behind maybe this family heirloom that we have? Is it an item that could be great for a charity that's having a sale or some kind of a, a way to uh, raise money? A lot of the local charities here in Northeast Ohio have warehouse uh, sales, excuse me. So we have Hospice of the Western Reserve has one. Uh, we have a couple of um, Women Safe has one. The Cancer Societies all have their own little stores. So lots of places to have that furniture go to good value. And again, not just be sitting there full of china, full of crystal, full of dishes that we don't need. You know, those kinds of things. Um, let's take a look at then. Are there appliances in the house that don't work any longer? And you'd be amazed at when we go and do home visits, how many times people will say, I have an old fridge in the basement. I have an old fridge or freezer in the garage. They don't work, but I just never got rid of them. This is the time to get rid of those items. You don't need um, big items that don't serve any purpose. So um, just about every community today has somebody that you'll be able to find through your neighbors or even on Facebook. Uh, that will pick up junk or scrap metal or uh, perhaps they'll even come to your home. You don't have to get them upstairs and out in the driveway. But there are companies like, um, and I've used this one, 1-800-GOT-JUNK, groups like that that'll come and take away those appliances. Most charities are not going to take away appliances today. They may take furniture and they won't even all take upholstered furniture. So you need to find, uh, you know, creative um companies, if you will, or organizations that will take the things you don't need. So appliances is one, and not just the big appliances. Sometimes we have uh, an old Mr. Coffee, or we have some uh, alarm clocks, electric clock radios, landline phones, 
Uh, we may have old lamps that aren't working and we kind of save them to the side. I like this lamp. You know, I like this particular uh, device. I paid a lot of money for it. So we don't throw them away, but we still never repair them. So they're just sitting there as clutter. Now is the time to help that senior and say, this has been here for over a year or a few years. Let's go ahead and get rid of these. So whether it's those smaller devices that are kitchen items, the toaster, the coffee pot, uh, or whether it's something, again, that uh, was a lamp or an item we thought we would repair, but we never did, it's time to toss those. Are there uh, areas in the house where you store items for outside? Um, but maybe it's a, a type of stuff that you don't really use anymore. So let's say you used to be a gardener or you did your own uh, mowing of the lawn or your weeding, took care of your own property. But now that senior isn't able to do that anymore. And maybe you have a landscaping service or the person even lives in a condo. Do you need the wheelbarrow? Do you need all those rakes and the shovels and the hose? Do you need all those you know, gardening devices, including the planters and the flower pots? Or is that a good item that we could begin to downsize and get rid of? Because we certainly won't be needing them. And why leave that for the next person who may be in that home to have to deal with? So that's a really popular one. Your senior may also have rooms in the house that were originally bedrooms or side rooms and really aren't used that way anymore. They may have converted one into a sewing room. You may have an office area. You may have converted one into a uh, area like a man's room, if you will, or what do they call it, man's cave, I should have said, something like that. And yet you've got all this gaming equipment, you've got sewing equipment, tons of fabric. Again, those kinds of things, a hobby room for arts and crafts. If you're not using those spaces and those rooms are filled with items that haven't been used in over a year, those are great opportunities for us to assist somebody in saying, let's get some containers, let's pack them up, let's see if they can be useful to a club or organization like a senior center or an assisted living community. Can we sell them? But let's get them out of the house. They're not serving any purpose. And this also goes for the area that may be in a garage or a basement that was previously a workshop. Maybe someone has power tools, power saws, drills, lots of items that were used for the household maintenance or perhaps even just a hobby but aren't needed anymore. Um, great items to sell. Same in the garage for any car items. You may have some uh, items that you use, ramps, car cleaning equipment, uh, wet and dry vacs, you know, extra vacuum cleaners. Sometimes I see people with two or three or four of those. Those are the things that we don't need them. Let's get rid of them. The other thing is, again, be alert to the charities that may be accepting of those sorts of items if they are able to be donate, donated. So we have, of course, uh, Salvation Army still is picking up. Easter Seals may be doing it. Uh, Military Order of the Purple Heart. Those are some of the kinds of organizations. And you have to check with them now because they may be on COVID restrictions of their own. Um, take a look now inside the house. Where are some of the items that we all typically have a lot of clutter, but can really be a clutter uh, magnet, if you will, for seniors? And one of them is the closet. So in the closet, let's take a look at the clothing itself. Are there items that no longer fit? Are there items that needed buttons or zippers or repair? We just never got around to it. Those items should all be tossed. Uh, how many jackets does one need? How many umbrellas does one need? How many winter coats does one need? You may be at the point where we can talk with a senior about only needing to have one or two of those items and not five or six or seven or eight. Sometimes uh, folks in our generation have held on to items because we've been through tough times and we never know when we may need that. I may need that again, you know. We often see that when people go out to eat and we get all those little disposable containers that uh, we get our food in and we think, boy, that's a nice container. I could use that. I could reuse that. Uh, I'm guilty of that one also, you know. So get rid of those kinds of things. They're all clutter magnets, if you will. So looking at the clothing, does it fit? Is it in good repair? Is it something I would wear? Do I have too many multiples? Use that as kind of a guideline, if you will. And remember, you're either going to donate these items, you're going to sell these items, you may give them to someone that you know personally, like a, a child or a relative, whomever it may be that would like these items. And the last one is toss. So you finally basically have four categories you're gonna be thinking about. 
Um, you certainly want to keep a one nice dress or one nice suit, but if you're not a dress up person, you're not really going out a lot, the senior isn't really going to dinners or church or major events, you probably only need one or two nice outfits and you don't need a closet full of suits or long gowns or things that they may have worn at different times in their life. Um, mother of the bride outfits, you know, that kind of thing. So you decide what's important there. Same thing with shoes. We all need shoes that are sensible, that fit, that give us the ability to step firmly and have a nice gait when we're walking. But we probably don't need all those high heels from the past. You don't need shoes that don't fit, that maybe we bought and didn't really care for. So let's get that two or three pairs of good shoes and maybe a boot uh, and, and leave it at that and try to get rid of some of those other ones, especially the high heels, that kind of thing. You know what I mean. Then think about, uh, you know, in our uh, bedrooms, if you will, or our storage closets, do we have a dresser or a chest of drawers that maybe holds shirts, tops, shorts, slacks, undergarments, same sorts of things. I would say I, I don't know anybody that probably doesn't have a box of mismatched slacks. That's one of those things we hold on to. I can use that to dust. I can use that to clean. I'm going to find that other sock that goes with this one. I know it's somewhere. It's probably in the dryer, you know. Toss all those. You know, socks are not expensive anymore. You need a dozen pair of socks at most. Same thing with underwear. Get rid of underwear that isn't good for you, that doesn't fit anymore. Uh, get rid of the nightgowns, the pajamas, all those things that you just have multiples and multiples of. And sometimes those are the items we get as a gift, especially when we're a little older. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten those kinds of things as gifts. So if we don't need them, put them in those four categories. We're going to discard, we're going to give away, we're going to donate, or we're going to sell. So whichever one it is, you know, take a look at that. Looking then if you have an area where you store all your old papers and important papers, how old are those important papers. We really only need to keep um, IRS and receipts and all that kind of stuff seven years. So if you've got pay stubs that go back into the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and you've got old um, income tax documents, old legal documents, it could be time to go ahead and either scan them or shred them. And you can either get a shredder yourself. Uh, you can go in this area of Northeast Ohio, the Marks Drugstores all have free shredding. You just go right up to the customer service desk. You can take a box at a time and they use Iron Mountain. So there are a lot of free ways, including your own community may have a shredding day a few times a year. So take a look at all those old papers, your old um, utility bills. Remember a lot of folks in this age group, mine included, 65 and older, they may hang on to papers because they like that paper receipt. We keep our old checks. We keep all these things I just spoke of. We don't need to do that anymore. We can establish online accounts. We can do the same with our medical information so we don't have to keep all those Medicare and insurance claims and all those visit summaries and all the information from our mail order pharmacy. That is something, again, it is very much uh, what I would call clutter. So we can get rid of those. Um, then think of, of things like making sure we have proper containers for the items that we do want to keep. If you're somebody that has a lot of photographs and you've held on to them during the years, but you've got some here and some there and, and they're everywhere, get some of those containers that fit. You know, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, any of these types of stores have the photo boxes. They're usually five for $10. They look like a shoe box, but they're just a little more uh, decorated. Get your photos in there. I have for the probably the past 10 years, every year, given those kinds of boxes at holiday time to the younger people in the family each one filled with pictures that we have of them or that we took of them through the years. So now that they're grown, they have those pictures in their own home. That's a great gift item. It doesn't really cost much, a couple of dollars for these boxes. And then you can give those, they have meaning, they may have a story with each one and it serves a purpose. So definitely think about that. If you have, uh, as I said, with your old papers, things that you need to retain, think about a metal box or a file drawer or a um, safety deposit box, or even some flash drives where you can scan and save images without having to have all those papers and old boxes. We don't need those anymore. Tackle the food pantry. Um, again, I'm guilty of this. I like to buy in bulk. I like to buy on sale. You know, take a look at the pantry. Are there items that are outdated? Are there items that you really don't need anymore? You know, how many times do we feel like we have so much cookware, so many utensils? 
um, so many teacups, so many of the coffee cups we get at health fairs. What can we get rid of? We only need so many of one type of item. So that's a great place. Looking at the food, definitely the fridge and the pantry for outdated items, freezer burn items, items that maybe we got as a gift, food items that we didn't really have any intention of using. Uh, if you have any spices that are in metal containers, uh, those were stopped a long time ago. McCormick has not made metal containers since I think the 70s. Uh, so if you have anything like that in a, a metal container, uh, those are definitely old and definitely expired. So go ahead and toss those. So some of the things we've been talking about now are ways to help a person who's living alone kind of make their house a little bit more safe and declutter at the same time. One of the categories I also wanted to mention is when we're talking about uh, going through the cupboards, let's make sure we include the bathroom cupboards and the medicine cupboard. So in your bathroom, you know, do you have uh, things that are expired? Do you have old over-the-counter medications? Do you have old prescription medications? You know, if your cough syrup is five years old, it may not be good for you anymore. So your local police department probably has a way to accept those. Most of them have an item that looks like a mailbox and you just walk in and dump the items. A lot of the hospitals uh, have the same kind of thing. So take a look around or Google or call your police department. There's certainly a way for you to get rid of old prescriptions, over-the-counter uh, types of medications. And then just, you know, if you have uh, shampoo and bars of soap that, and I actually have seen people that have them since the World War II, uh, probably could let go of a few of those. You know, if you've got soap from the previous World Wars, that's quite a stash. You got me beat as somebody that uh, shops ahead. So our second scenario then is the senior who's moving into a senior living environment. Again, an apartment, an assisted living, a senior, uh, you know, continuing care community, which is the not-for-profit generally, or even a nursing home. You're going to do everything we just talked about, all those same things that we had in scenario one, but we're going to add to that that you want to talk to the people whom you're working with at the retirement uh, environment and see if they have floor plans, see if they can send you measurements, see if they can send you little virtual tours or videos so that you know what will actually fit in the space. And those are the items you want to bring. So even at our lantern communities, when someone's moving in, we do that. We send floor plans that are very specific. I take all kinds of measurements. We do the videos and we even send along lists. Here's what you need to bring. And so when we say these are the items to bring, we want you to bring the, the best things that you have. So bring one robe, bring two or three pairs of pajamas, bring two or three sets of towels, two or three sets of sheets, not a linen cupboard full. You know, and same at home. You don't need all those things. You don't need 20 pairs of shoes. You don't need huge, large furniture. You need to be able to move freely, to move safely. So when you're moving to that senior living community, let them help you. They may even have a move-in coordinator who will come to your home in advance and help you declutter and help you look at the space you have and the items you have in your home and what will fit and what won't. There are companies today that you can hire that also will do that. They'll actually come to your home, help you measure, help you pick things out, and get you along your way so that you're coming into your new senior living environment with, again, no clutter whatsoever. You want to make sure that when you're going to the senior living community, and even in your own home, I uh, meant to bring this up when we talked about throw rugs, you don't want anything like that in your bathroom. You can use a bath mat but you certainly don't need any kind of uh, bathroom rugs on the floor, if you will. And most won't even allow you to have that. So if you're moving to a senior living environment, keep the items that are in good repair. Make sure the lamps have good cords. Make sure all the little uh, appliances, if you will, work. And you, you know, take the things that have value to you for your everyday quality of life and leave the rest uh, you know, at home, if you will. Now, you may be going to a senior living community with the intent of keeping your home in the family, and we have that often. So if you're doing what we've talked about this evening, then what you've left behind hopefully can be staged and kind of put together so it's inviting for anyone who will come to your home. Maybe you have relatives that will use the home. You may have grandchildren who are going to live there for a bit. It gives them the ability to have a safe, clean environment without you know feeling like they're in a grandma's museum, if you will. Um, so, uh, going on that to scenario number three, that would be for the senior who is moving out of their house, going either to the senior living community, live with a relative, a nursing home, what have you, but also where the home is going to be sold. I'm sorry, I'm working out of my home office here. 
So um, in that scenario, uh, we would have um, all the things we just spoke about, but we want to have then the ability to know that either we're going to have uh, the home staged, so we're going to use the available leftover furniture to put it in, uh, you know, uh, a, the look of a living room, the look of a dining room, or perhaps we're going to completely empty the house. Remember, work with your realtor. If you're going to list it, they'll give you the advice. They know what colors work, what furniture works, what staging works. People coming to look at a home for sale have to be able to envision that space with their things. So typically, they don't want all your family photographs and your trophies and a full of papers and clutter. So if you've been successful in looking at each room, each cabinet, you know, each space, as we've talked about tonight, you will have retained the items that have value to you. And you've made the decisions then about what to donate, what to keep, what to toss, and what to sell. And if you're able to do all those things, then you will have uh, effectively, to the best of your ability, been able to declutter and downsize for that senior household. And remember, there are companies that can help. Within your own family, you may decide you want to have a couple Saturdays where you're going to get together and help the senior do some of these things, you know, buy a pizza or make it a time when as you are looking at these individual items, remember that many of them will hold an emotional or sentimental uh, place, if you will, uh, in the heart of your senior. So be prepared. It's not going to be as simple as let me take these books and put them in a box and we're going to donate them. But I got that book uh, on my birthday. Grandpa gave it to me. I bought this item on our vacation. So almost every item may have a little story. That's part of your family history. So enjoy the time and the experience of being able to declutter and downsize when you can plan it, when you can make it happen on your terms, and not when you have to do it in a very short amount of time in a way that you don't want to, and it just becomes overwhelming. So remember that you know, tonight we talked about declutter to downsize and uh, taking care of a senior household. We all have to do this at some point, generally for someone we love. And it's something that we can do. We have to plan to do it. There are many tips that will help us be able to do it effectively and without, you know, as I said, it being too overwhelming. So I hope we've given you some ideas tonight that are helpful to you. Again, you have scenario one, somebody that's going to be living independently and needs to be safe. Scenario two, they're leaving that environment, but you're keeping the home. You just need it to be a little less uh, full. And number three, they're leaving the home, and you have to have that home either ready for sale in terms of having it staged or it's been sold already. So you have those three different scenarios. If you have any tips and you have any ideas because you've been through these experiences, please share them with us in the comment section because we'd love to share those with other people tonight. I want to thank all of you for watching our program once again. This is Carolyn's Caregiving Connection. It is aired live on Thursday nights at 7. It's always recorded, so you can catch it on demand. You can share it with another person. We do invite your uh, comments. We do want you to like us if you can because that helps us reach a larger audience. And remember, we are on YouTube, so we uh, are trying to reach uh, more and more folks. In the last few months, we've grown from you know a few hundred views, if you will, to now, I think in the last couple of weeks, it's been almost 12,000. So, and that comes from being on various pages and in groups like LinkedIn and, as we said, YouTube and what have you. So by enable, uh, being able to reach some of these larger groups, we're able not only to um, have people know who we are, if you will, but we're able to get ideas coming out that are from caregivers to caregivers. So we're helping one another. And that, that's part of what helps us in that journey of caregiving, knowing that we're not alone and what each of us can uh, assist the other based on our own experiences. So I do look forward to seeing you again next week on Thursday at 7. And until then, I send you my best for today and always. Thanks for watching.